Hey guys, for this week's meta report, I am going to be doing a tier list on carries. I want to preface this video by saying what I believe has changed in the carry role. I believe the carry role is a lot about trying to win your lane if possible because the flag bearer creeps make it much more enticing for you to stay in lane. So heroes that trade well and sit in lane for an extended period of time feel pretty nice. And it feels like there's really no in between. You're either a hero that dominates the lane and sits in it and makes use of that extra gold or you lose your lane to these annoying offlaners and you go into the jungle and buy a Midas. That feels like most of my games, I'll be honest with you. Middle grounds, not so much. So just kind of keep that in mind that that's usually what I'm experiencing and you guys can be looking out to do the same. And uh, this is why I'm giving you the hero tier list that I'm giving you. Banana slam, jam. Let's go ahead and go alphabetical order. Alchemist. Um, I think he's a solid situational pick. I think he's been nerfed a bit with his talents, as well as the fact that BKB has gotten nerfed, um, and the flag bearer creep gives him less percentage-wise than it gives to other heroes. But especially on Dire, um, where you can still stack all the jungle camps, I feel like the hero is pretty nice. Anti-Mage, I'll put him uh, in C tier. I do believe last pick anti-mage can be incredibly potent this patch. If you see like two int cores, especially like ranged offlaners that you can blink on. The level one mana burn slow when they run out of mana feels really powerful in lane, but I would really only last pick him. Next up is Arc Warden. Uh, I know his win rate's really high. Uh, I haven't seen the hero too much carry. I've seen him a bit of mid. I will say last pick counter pick, unless you're an Arc Warden spa spammer. Like if you're an Arc Warden specialist, you know this is a hero that I'll leave it up to you. Bloodseeker... Um, I, I feel like a lot of other people value him higher than I do, but I'm going to put him like right below anti-mage. Uh, I feel like the BKB nerfs have hurt him a lot. Um, and he also doesn't feel reliable to sit and lane this patch. Uh, there's just a lot of kill heroes. I feel like on carry, the heroes that sit in lane are the ones that trade well, but are also very difficult to gank. Bloodseeker, unless he's like moving really fast because you're low is just really prone to ganks and usually likes to get an earlier maelstrom and go into the jungle. Um, so I feel like the way he plays is not necessarily optimal this patch. Uh, Bristleback, I'd say he's probably at the point of last pick, counter pick now. Um, he's good against summons offlaners. Beastmaster, Visage, Lycan. He's just really good at dealing with these heroes early push pressure. But other than that, the hero just doesn't feel good enough. I... I think I'm generous to put CK in C tier. I don't really know when I would pick him, but I wouldn't like flame somebody for picking him. Just doesn't feel overall that powerful. Clinks, I'd put solid B tier. His win rate's really high. It is higher for lower MMRs, so it's probably like A tier if you're lower MMR. Um, what I like about Clinks is that he seems incredibly difficult to gank this patch. Out of all these like ranged damage dealers, um, once Clinks gets Maelstrom, if the game's in like a decent state, it feels like they always get really farmed and it's really difficult to find them and they're always super high level and stuff and they clear creep waves from fog. Uh, my issue with them is the laning stage. Um, so if people aren't pressuring very well in lanes, I think this hero's broken because his weakest point is before Maelstrom. But after that, he's pretty busted. I actually think Doom can be played carry this patch, but I wouldn't really recommend him. For most of you guys. Um, I've situationally picked him. I believe twice now. Just the buff to Midas on neutral camps. Has felt really nice. So you get it pretty early. And then you get that. Uh, like a hero that doesn't normally jungle. It's actually a serious issue a lot of times. If the carry does not farm jungle. Because then you just end up with no neutral items. Um, so I think that was a big part of why Doom was never considered for carry. In the past. Um, and so now that he gets a Midas and he'll start getting those neutral items, um, I think makes a reasonably big difference. And he also likes to sit in lanes, right? This is a kind of hero that he's not hard to gank, but he's kind of hard, right? Because he has Scorched Earth and he's a tanky strength hero. Um, and also just nobody wants to lane against him, you know, once he's six. So heroes that control lanes. I do think Doom's a bit more of an offlaner. I haven't seen him too much pick though. I'm honestly a bit surprised. I think the hero's underrated. Drow. I've had low to medium success with Drow. I'm trying to put her above CK, but yeah. I feel like Drow is supposed to win her lane, and the buff to her Q makes her really strong. But I would only pick Drow if my five 
is going to win me the lane. Like, if I have, like, an undying. If I feel like I'm going to win my lane, I would recommend Drow. But I feel like I pick her, expecting to do decently in lane. And then unless I have an absolute lane dominating five, I just don't. And then the hero feels like I have to farm for 20 minutes. Which is just not what this hero generally wants to do. Uh, phase of Void. S tier carry. Uh, I believe if K I believe Faces Void is the best carry in the entire patch. I believe he dictates literally everything that goes on in the carry role. Um, if you're in pubs and you play Void really well, um, I don't know how much he's bled into the lower MMRs yet, but in my bracket, he's picked or banned pretty much every single game. If I am considering picking a hero, um, it has to be good against Void, um, or I just won't pick it, or I'll pick Void. <laughs> Uh, that's how broken this hero is. Uh, what made the hero so strong is that uh, he needs like the early moments in the game to farm. He needs to get that like first or second item, right? The Midas, the Mask of Madness, the Maelstrom. And he just doesn't jungle fast, but he's insanely hard to gank. He loves sitting in lane. So I think the Flag Bearer creep benefited this hero way more than any other hero in Dota. And they also just happened to give him longer range on his max time walk, which is significant it went from 650 to 800 but small changes like this can certainly put a hero like faces void over the edge it feels like he just reliably gets that timing the flag bearer creeps effectively like 35 gold every minute um for a hero that seriously just needs one or two items that is a really big deal because it fits his playstyle. he isn't adjusting to it at all and also the sustain from the creep i've noticed allows me to usually skip mask of madness and it also allows me to ferry out less tangos on a hero that would have sustain issues otherwise um so it just makes the hero feel so insanely good gyro uh i tried him once they removed his flat cannon talent at 10 this hero is just not a carry anymore just straight up not a carry anymore it just feels so underwhelming he might be situational with io specifically but otherwise i wouldn't do that to yourself um i actually think huskar is more of a mid and I think he's a really solid mid, uh, especially 10th pick. Um, but if he's going to be played carry, he's definitely a last pick counter pick. Uh, the laning stage armor buff definitely feels relevant for him um, because he started with zero in the past. You know, I would say Jug is honestly at low B, high C, but he's not really like a counter pick hero. He's just like an all around decent pick. What I would say about Jug is that he's still solid if Void's banned. But his slight nerfs and other heroes getting slight buffs, I feel like the hero's like about average. So if you're like really good at Jug, you played him a lot last patch, he's one of your favorite heroes, still a perfectly fine hero to pick. But I feel like there's just generally better options this patch if your hero pool's wide and you're attempting to, you know, pick optimally uh, rather than picking comfort. Um, Life Stealer feels very weak. Um, every Life Stealer I've seen, it wins its lane and it just kind of falls off. I might be wrong about this, but he doesn't match up well against any of the meta heroes that I've seen, including Faces Void, very bad matchup for him. And a lot of the off lanes I'm seeing are like Enigmas and Death Prophets, and this hero is just not good against them. So I just wouldn't. So maybe if people are picking like strength off laners in your bracket, a lot of times they're picking like dual melee strength off lanes, like a four position melee strength and a, five, and a three position melee strength. I think that's when this hero is pickable. Okay. But I don't really see that. I think Lone Druid's A tier. I don't actually play him. But uh, I see any Lone Druid specialist winning with him. Very minor nerfs to his Savage Roar. Not a big deal. Yeah. I mean, every every Lone Druid specialist is still picking him, still playing him. And the hero does very well from what I've seen. Luna. I would put her in B tier. I think she goes specifically well with uh, the fact that she wants her other lanes to win. So she's a pretty strong laner. But what makes her strong now, I feel like, is that she has more space to farm from 5 minutes to 10 minutes because her team is doing more damage from anywhere on the map because her aura is global at nighttime. So I've been leaning away from building laning items on her as much as possible, just going like straight treads into Mask of Madness or Yasha or Lance, really rotating between lane and jungle a lot. Because she's gankable, she doesn't love sitting in lane, but I love if my support is like soaking XP under tower, they dive my support, I come in and clean up um, after coming from the jungle. I think the hero is really good at that playstyle, but I wouldn't pick her if I feel like my other lanes are weak, okay? Because that's what makes her strong, I think. Um, I believe Medusa in... I have not seen a single game of Medusa 
in Europe. Uh, I think the pace of the game slows down a lot, which could benefit a hero like this. If you feel like your games are stagnating, Medusa would be a great option. But I've also heard she's getting picked a ton in North America pubs. Um, so I'll put her like here, high C, maybe low B, and just say that if your games are really slow and being long drawn out, Medusa might be a good option. But I feel like her lane, she doesn't like to sit in lane. These flag bearer creeps are not good for her, specifically Dire. I would only pick her on Dire. I would. Be, I know that sounds like maybe high level thinking, but uh, the camps, so you can kill multiple camps at once on Dire, and they're closer together which is so important for a hero like Medusa with split shot, and she's also really slow. I would put Monkey King at situational last pick. Probably upper C, though. He's really good against melee off lanes. He's also really good if he you need somebody that punishes melees, and you also need a stun. That's when Monkey King is really strong, but I wouldn't pick him if I don't see the off laner yet. Morphling, I've been seeing more and more, and I think the hero is a solid meme unless you are a god tier morphling player. So they made him a lot more survivable with his shard, and I've seen some morphlings kind of take over. A lot of people are going like Ags. Um, third item, they're going like Dragonlance, Manta, Ags. My issue with the hero is that he's always had two issues. One is dying before he attribute shifts, and two is he just doesn't solo win the game. He doesn't kill... There's no point in the game where he kills everybody. He's not like a hard carry in that sense. He needs a team surrounding him, and he doesn't flash farm. So what I feel like happens when I'm playing against Morphling is that the hero's really farmed every game because he's really survivable. He fits the flag bearer creep meta, all that kind of stuff. But we just kill everybody else, and then we kill Morphling. That's what it feels like. Naga, I actually think is a super strong C, maybe even B tier. The only reason I would say, I think she's like a situational pick. Um, if they lack illusion clear, the buff felt incredibly noticeable when I played her. Um, if you like playing Naga, this is definitely one of the best patches in the recent past to do it. Um, my build on her, which I think is probably good in most games. I did Midas, but you can either skip the Midas or go Midas. Into Manta. Um, and from there, in an ideal world, I would go Butterfly, Lincoln's, uh, Sheepstick, Strength Blink. I know that sounds crazy, but uh, you should try it out. It allows her to farm insanely fast, take over the entire map, and then eventually just kill everybody. And the Strength Blink I like better than the Agi Blink, because it offers her team fight impact and control on a hero that otherwise usually lacks it, other than just making them stand still with her ult. Nature's Prophet, you know, for the tier list sake, I'll put him D, because I don't recommend you guys play this hero. I think this hero is insanely difficult, um, conceptually. Uh, so if you love playing Nature's Prophet, go for it. But if you are like thinking, should I pick up Nature's Prophet BSJ? I say no. Uh, PA is back in D tier for me. She might work in long drawn out lower MMR games where she has time to farm a Battle Fury, but it feels like they nerfed her significantly enough in my games that it's kind of like the opposite of Faces Void. Faces Void reliably hits his timings. PA does not. PL probably... He's probably weaker than, like, almost all these heroes. Probably, like, around here. Um, very strong last pick. But I feel like people are getting baited into picking him against off lanes where he can, like, dodge their shit, like Primal Beast and stuff. And then these heroes just run at him and then buy Radiance. And the hero... F and the Radiance getting buffed is always a direct... An indirect nerf to PL because uh, the AoE mischance makes him do way less damage. Um, and it also helps reveal the real PL, um, the damage over time. So the fact that Radiance got significantly buffed, I think really hurt PL. Um, I wouldn't really recommend Razor. I would just say here, I think he's actually a good hero in the carry role um, at the higher brackets, um, especially when you have like a mid Lena, something that's going to actually carry. Um, but I wouldn't recommend him to you guys. That's what I would say. Okay. Like I, you'll see him probably picked in competitive a little bit at TI, um, but I don't think he's optimal for you guys to play to win your games. Ricky, uh, same thing as these other heroes, uh, but Nature's Prophet's kind of over here on his own reason. I, I have seen Ricky never win in my bracket. He doesn't feel like he gets to level six before the offlaner, which is his, his lane win condition. That just feels like it doesn't happen. He is pretty easily gankable when he's sitting on lanes. Um, even though he's invis if he's popping out to hit the creeps and then he doesn't jungle so like I said Midas jungling or sitting in lane ungankable and he doesn't fit that I actually think SF is probably mid C Been seeing it more and more and more 
yeah, the hero can do the same play style as Luna, basically. He has higher range and minus armor rather than Glaives. Very similar hero otherwise. Slark, I would put him here. What I would basically say is in my bracket, he's a situational last pick. I've seen it have very little success. Um, I've seen people going around with the Radiance Ags build, um, which I tried and was not good in the game I played. Um, I kind of knew that, but I wanted to try it anyway. I think he's better in low MMRs, though. Um, the hero is definitely viable, okay? He's definitely viable. Uh, a lot of people are going for an Ag second or third item because now Pounce gives you three Essence Shift stacks. So it definitely buffs that build a lot. You guys are going to hate me for this, but I unironically believe Sniper is A tier. I believe he can be played as a carry from the mid lane or the side lane. In the side lane, he is a 4-1-1 uh, builder um, where he maxes Shrapnel in order to defend his tower, clear stacks. While on mid lane, he's usually going 0-4-4. Um, lane dominating, no small camp, um, guarantee denies when you have two points and headshot. Um, he's like the strongest laning carry in the game, I think. As long as you have a five position that can kind of tank for you, uh, this hero is absolutely nutty. He has a lot of different builds. Uh, he can rotate between lane and jungle a lot. He's perfectly fine to buy a Midas. He's perfectly fine to buy a Maelstrom. I go a lot of stat items on this hero because he does a ton of damage. I usually go two or three stat items like Manta, Dragonlance, into some damage items. Silver Edge, MKB, all that kind of stuff. Deso. Yeah, the hero, honestly, I've had insane success with Sniper. Uh, very much love the hero. Spectre, situational. Last pick, I would say. I don't play the hero um, unless she's a hero that's in the meta. I feel like I only see her in the Chinese region. Heavily relies on her team to be making plays and that's just something i don't personally like to do as a carry and i don't find enjoyable in pubs i would actually put Sven in a tier this is going to probably shock a lot of you guys as well um obviously i want to remind you that this playlist is based on my own experience Sven feels incredibly reliable um this patch the he had he got basically here's what changed for Sven. the flag bearer creep i think is nice for him because he has sustain issues um I've seen, I've gone like Phase Midas, I've gone Treads Mask of Madness. Um, if I can get out of my lane at level 6, meaning like I've hit level 6 before I have to leave my lane, this hero feels like almost a free win. His ultimate got lower cooldown, and then two patches ago they also gave it a 15 second talent at level 15. This hero used to have a downtime, like this hero used to be a cooldown based hero. But his ultimate's only 75 second cooldown, guys. Like, it's not a long cooldown. I feel like his late game is insanely better because of that. And then another way to deal with Sven in the past was to dispel his war cry. That was, like, one of the best ways to kill this hero. And the shard now gives you extra 7 armor on war cry. If you're against heavy physical damage lineups, the level 20 talent adds another 10 armor on there. And it's not dispellable anymore so long story short i feel like this hero kind of fits the flag bearer midas meta and he also scales way better than he used to i feel it in every game that i play sven um i'm i believe i'm like five and two this patch with sven it feels very good probably make a guide on him in the near future um ta i would also put a tier i don't think she's as good as these other three but man she just as long as she gets out of her lane if she's not against some viper veno shit you know she loves to jungle. She loves to rotate between lane. Um, the flag bearer creep is just nice for her in the early game. But then what's so nice about this hero is that she's always on the wave when she's clearing it, unlike illusion heroes or summons heroes. And she's always very safe clearing the wave. So she's one of the few flash farmers that I think still benefited from the flag bearer creep. Terror Blade, I'd put high B. Definitely benefits from the laning stage regen from the flag bearer creep, but obviously he doesn't get the gold from it when he's jungling and sending his illusions down lanes. I would say he's high B for for a mortal bracket, but he's probably low B or mid C for for lower MMRs, um, just because he is a hero that is cooldown reliant and convincing your team to not fight when you don't have meta is kind of difficult. I'd put troll high C. Um, I think the hero is solid. Strong laner, specifically good against like Undying and Omni Knight, just to kill the tomb and dispel the Omni Knight spells with his Ags. But overall, I think he, there's still generally better options. Ursa, I would also say, is like second in the C tier. The level 15 talent that applies Fury Swipes on his Earth Shock feels nice, but it also feels noticeable that he's missing the 350 health talent. The hero feels incredibly squishy. 
mid to late game comparatively. Like, it's much more reliable to be able to burst this guy. Um, he doesn't usually buy HP items, so I think that hurt him a lot. Weaver, I have seen virtually no times to pick Weaver. And uh, I would say, honestly, I haven't seen times to pick him, but he's probably still somewhere around here. The shard change hurt him a lot as a carry because the old shard made it so he could detect heroes late game, which was a pretty big deal for a carry to be able to not have to buy, have a slot for detection who's like chasing the back lines. He's like an assassin type carry. But most notably, he's really bad against Sven and Void. Sven just gives his entire team armor, which makes Weaver do no damage. Also has a stun, but then Void just, you know, shits on Weaver in every capacity. Wraith King, I will pick this hero sometimes, and it is only because he's good against Void, okay? That is the only reason I would pick this hero. I picked him once, I don't know, he feels like, like the fourth best stunning carry, okay? Um... The skeleton nerfs early, it feels pretty palpable. I will say he's a nice Radiance builder, though. The item's definitely buffed, and if the game's slow enough paced, nice Radiance builder. Only with Io. I'll put him here. I love Lesh, but he's only good with Io. So yeah, this is my final hero tier list for 7.32b. This is obviously my subjective experiences that I've, ex that I've had in the last two weeks. But I hope this guy kind of helps guide you guys on what heroes to put into your hero pool potentially if you want to learn some new ones. Uh, maybe get back on one of these heroes that you didn't realize might that I think is pretty good like Sven for instance um, that you used to love to play. Check out my stream if you want to see me playing these heroes. The higher up they are on the list the more likely it is that I am playing them. So yeah guys like comment subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.